if you will, if you haven't done so already, please um, let me know by texting the number beside the item that you are most familiar with to the number at the top. And we're going to talk about um, Poll Everywhere, which is a software I'll cover toward the end of the presentation that I used to create this poll with. At this point, it looks like Dropbox. People are most familiar with Dropbox. We'll come back to this in a second. Okay. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to do a quick introduction. Does the sound okay? I'm not used to being this loud, so I apologize. <laughs> oh, um, my name is Amy Wise. I am um, currently the distance learning specialist at Enterprise State Community College in, Al in Enterprise, Alabama. I'm sure you couldn't tell from my strong country accent that I'm from Alabama. So I just want to begin by saying I hope that y'all enjoy the presentation. <laughs> I, um, I'm also an instructor um, for the OAD program, Office Administration. Um, I am reorganizing um, the program somewhat, and I have um, went through a name change. We are now the Administrative Assistant and Office Management Program. Just um, kind of, you know, refreshing um, the program a little bit. But. Um, as you can see, I received my bachelor's degree from Troy University in computer science, uh, my master's degree in business education from Auburn, and I am currently working on my doctorate degree through Auburn University in educational leadership. Um, my research interest at this moment is um, I'm hoping through my research to answer the question, why is there such a difference in the grade distribution and the retention rates um, on, in our online courses versus our face-to-face -face courses. Through my position as the distance learning specialist, I help train the faculty on using our learning management system. Um, we are currently using Blackboard and plan to transition to Canvas um, in the summer semester. So through my uh, training of the faculty, I also try my best to um, help them learn new technologies um, to present the content to the students so that they are a little bit more advanced in technology. One thing that I have um, I've done through my position is I offer a Tech Tuesday email. And what this is is I send out an email every Tuesday with a new technology that I previewed for that week. And I've gotten really good feedback from my instructors on that. Um, I've also had several of the administrative assistants at the college be asked to add me add them to the email. And even the president has wanted to be added because most of the time it's a technology you know, that's uh, real popular or it's just, it just helps with efficiency. Okay, and um, these are the objectives for the session. I'm just gonna um, go over just a few um, of the interesting um, technologies that we have found that have been popular at the community college I am employed at. Okay, Jean is gonna be the first one, and then I'll go over Screencast-O-Matic. Poll Everywhere is what she used at the beginning um, to let me know what you were most familiar with. Then we'll talk about Prezi, and then Dropbox, and then Remind 101. Okay, Jean is um, used to take screenshots. It's used to capture an image of what you see on your computer screen. Um, I am, I've always used Control plus Print Screen, and I recently uh, got a MacBook Pro, and you don't have that option with MacBook. So um, after a little while, I realized, okay, I can just use Jean for this, and finally I did Google to find out how I could do my print screen on my MacBook, but Jean was a much better solution for that. You can also record videos through Jean. Um, I mainly just use it for capturing images, but it works really well in online courses. Um, I've done it so that students um, can understand what the screen's gonna look like when they log into their course. Um, I've also used it, I use SAM in some of my courses, and I've used it a lot with SAM, you know, just so that we understand how the screen's gonna look when they log in and what they're gonna do to complete a task. Ways to use it in the classroom to eliminate brain flush, um, explanation for homework, and student presentations. And as you know, almost everyone learns better with a visual representation of what they need to do. The next um, technology is Screencast-O-Matic. 
It's the original online screen recorder for creating screen captures. Um, I have found as an instructor that students, um, especially in my online classes, learn a little bit better when they hear my voice. I'm sure you have had the same experiences. Um, so I often will record a short little video about the module that week or the chapters that week. And one way that I get them to actually watch the videos, because that's always been an issue, is I will um, present a bonus question answer during my video. I usually do that either at the beginning, at the middle, or at the end. So each week they never know where they're going to get that bonus question answer. So, yes, ma'am. In the actual video? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, but that's, that's the way um, that I do, I do mine. I record my, my voice. Um, but the maximum recording time is 15 minutes. Um, and most research points to the fact that, you know, that's generally a 30-minute TV show with commercials, and most of us have TiVo or, you know, some type of DVR now, so we're fast-forwarding through those commercials. So 15 minutes is about the limit that anyone's going to sit really and watch a video probably. So, you know, you may want to divide up your chapters. You know, most of our classes or the classes at the community college that I work at are an hour and 15 minutes long. So I may want to divide that up into topics or chapters, but um, 15 minutes at a time is all that you can do. So, um, There's no software issues with Screencast-O-Matic. I haven't found not one issue. It's all online, all cloud-based, all cloud computing, so it's really fabulous. Um, with Blackboard, I've had some issues when I recorded with like a voiceover PowerPoint. You know, I saved that as a Windows media file, well then my Mac users can't view that, or even my Windows users sometimes can't view that. So there hasn't been any issues that I've found with the Screencast-O-Matic. So that's a good thing. Poll Everywhere is um, what I used at the beginning. Um, it's just standard web technology. It's free for audiences of 40 or, or less. So if you have a larger class than 40, you can pay for a subscription. And I think it's pretty reasonable. You have to visit the website to know exactly um, the pricing, but it's a pretty reasonable rate um, for more than 40 users. But some of the uses, use, uses that we have used this for is um, bell ringer activities when the students first come into the room, just like I did for you guys. Um, it just kind of helps, you know, merge the group into a certain topic. Um, if you like I wanted to know exactly what you guys were most interested in, and I found that Dropbox was probably the most um, the thing you were most um, you've used before. Then um, I know I don't need to spend quite as much time on Dropbox. So that's how I would use it today. But making class decisions and um, testing student content knowledge. <clears throat> Prezi is the next topic. Um, Prezi is a cloud-based presentation software that opens new world um, between whiteboards and slides. Does anybody have any familiarity with Prezi? Have you used it successfully in the classroom? Okay, um, I'm going to be honest with you. One thing that I did that was a mistake was I um, assigned a Prezi. Uh, in my office management course, I gave the students the option of doing a PowerPoint presentation or a Prezi. One group um, decided that they wanted to do a PowerPoint presentation and one group decided they wanted to do a Prezi. So the PowerPoint um, group sent me their file when they completed it. Nice little packaged file. Um, they actually uploaded it to Blackboard. The other group posted their link. I did not realize that the group that used the Prezi would continue to edit their Prezi up until the day that they were supposed to present to the class. So in my opinion, that wasn't really fair to my PowerPoint group that had their little nice packaged PowerPoint uploaded. So that's the only really con that I found of Prezi is that you can change it. Right. That's the solution that I found. But in the beginning, the, just sharing the link did not work. So just like she said, you can export it now. So that was a great option. Another thing that's really good about Prezi that they've added kind of recently um, is the ability to upload a PowerPoint presentation into your Prezi. Now, why would I want to do that? Um, I'm going to show you really quick what the Prezi looks like. Hopefully it will open with no problems. It worked. Yeah. Yeah. 
I do in my desktop publications course, I, did, I do teach that. I, I do kind of a combination of several things, but we do touch on that topic. Yeah. Okay, this is an actual Prezi. And as you can see, you just jump from topic to topic. And zoom in and out from pictures, Venn diagrams. And if you get um, car sick, this might not be a good thing to do a whole lot of because after a while you get a little crazy vision wise. As you can see, the YouTubes integrate perfectly. They just play without any problem. And at the end, you always come back to where you started. You just link each section with a path. And that's how it knows to go back to the end, the beginning. Or, you know, the end if you don't want it to go back to the beginning. <clears throat> and those are some of the ways that you can use your Prezi's. Do you have anything to add, that you'd like to add about Prezi's? Anything that you've used in Prezi's? Yes, it is. I just downloaded the app last week. So it does, it, work, it worked really well for me last week. It did, mm -hmm. yep. And I think there's going to be an update pretty soon on that too. I was just reading that there's going to be an update on that. So it was working well. Let's go back over here. Okay, it's a zoomable canvas, like I said, and um, it just gives you another way to present your material to the students. Okay, and Dropbox um, is a free service that lets you bring your photos, docs, and videos anywhere and share them easily. There are several cloud drive um, options out there, but I use Dropbox. Um, I actually put this presentation in my Dropbox on, um, on the web so that in case I was um, somehow separated from my laptop during my four-hour flight that I would, I would have that presentation today to use on somebody's computer if they would let me use it. So um, Dropbox is a really great thing. It's free to sign up for Dropbox, and I'll be glad. You know, you can just go to dropbox.com and create an account, or I can send you an invitation, either one. And, yes, I sent it to um, Laura Zakura, so it should be added to the actual site. I think it will be added there, and I'll be glad to email it to you if you want me to do that at, you know, toward the end. You can give me your email address. I also was circulating around a list of all of these technologies with the site, websites and everything. So if you didn't get one of those, I'll be happy to email you those. So at the end, if you'll come up, I'll get your email address and I'll email you that. <clears throat> Remind 101 is another technology that we have found to be very useful. And we all know that we live in a text message world, right? Just like the speaker said earlier this morning, we, um, we receive and send several text messages a day, several text messages a month. So Remind 101 is a free, safe messaging service for teachers. Um, it doesn't share the teacher's phone number with the students. So I really like that. Um, you know, if, you, if you're not comfortable doing, your, you know, handing out your cell phone number to your students so they won't call you at midnight, um, then you can, you can use this service. It's free to sign up. You can just create a, an account. You can also group your classes. So if you need to send one group um, a mass text, you can do that. And um, <clears throat> I'll never forget as a freshman in college, I had an instructor um, that would send out an email to us every Monday that highlighted everything we did the week before and what we did, what we're going to do that week and what was due. And, you know, just as a freshman right out of high school, I probably wasn't the best college student, and it just really helped me focus on what I'm supposed to do each week. And that kind of set the pace for me through my entire college career, and I'm, of course, not finished yet, but, um, you know, just every Monday I get in that mindset, okay, what did I do last week, and now what do I have to do this week? And so I think that this is a good way to do that. You can send your email, like, say, on Monday morning or Sunday night and say, okay, this is what we did last week, and this is what we're going to do this week. And, you know, we... we we kind of have to teach our students to be better students through this technology. Another thing I really like about this is, as you all know, we're all getting students that maybe are not where they need to be with um, text message etiquette. 
And this, you can actually model, you know, the correct way to send a professional text message because, you know, if we continue on the way we're going, we're going to be sending text messages to our boss about certain things that we have going on in our jobs. So, you know, we can model that text message um, etiquette to them through this service. Yes, ma'am. It does, mm -hmm. but it also has an option that it can go to email also. You do have to have their numbers. Yeah, yeah, you have to have all their you have to have their cell phone number. And I get all my students to fill out an information card at the beginning of the semester anyway, so that I make sure you know if I need to call them about anything in particular. And I always tell them you know I'm not going to call you unless it's a major issue. And I have them check on there whether they want to receive that. So of course I don't force it on them. No, it does not share. Yeah, it's just like a blind copy in an email. They don't see each other's cell phone numbers. Com right, completely private. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. And you can also, you can copy it out of an Excel worksheet. So if you put it all in an Excel worksheet, which I usually do try to keep all my files, you know, in an Excel worksheet, so I have it with me. Right. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Anything else about that? You have you have to tell it what. Yeah, you have to sign the account. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're getting. Pretty close to our time. So, um, does anybody want to see a demonstration of the software, of any of the softwares? Um, I've actually got, um, let's go back over here. If you'll notice toward the top of the screen here, if you click on this little plus sign, this is my Jing here. So, it gives me my little drawing board of what I want to take a picture of and that's what I do for Jing. So you can download that on your on your laptop or your you know desktop or whatever or your iPad. It actually works on your iPad too. And you can capture the image and then there's your picture. Okay. So it's super simple. Because you know one thing that I've had a problem with with the print screen is I get a grainy picture sometimes. And we have at the community college where I work we have um, flat screen TVs throughout campus and they're called Weevil, we're the Weevils, Bow Weevils. Um, we were actually, we were not voted, but the Bow Weevils actually voted the um, worst mascot of all time. So that's kind of embarrassing, but we are the Bow Weevils. And um, so Weevil Vision, um, it has, um, we have the screens across campus. And so sometimes when I do the print screen, you really, it's really not clear at all on those TVs. So Gene has been very clear, works really well. Yes, yes, you do. You have all these options down here. Yep, and you can save it and things like that. Ooh. Yes, ma'am. That's that was the, the screenshots I use with print screen control and print screen. And one thing I found with that is the picture. Yeah, it's just a little bit grainy to me sometimes. The picture's not quite, especially if you um, copy it, you know, you save it as a PDF and it's shared several times. But with Jing, it stay, it seems to stay the same with, you know, with the copying and the presenting. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, exactly. Yes, ma'am. For, for the Jing, you can record up to five minutes. For Screencast-O-Matic, you can record up to 15 minutes. So this is Jing. This is the screenshot, and I can actually record using Jing. Or I can go to my Screencast-O-Matic, and you can actually go there from the website too, but I, I wanted to make sure I had it on my computer. So if I go to the Screencast-O-Matic, close this out. <clears throat> then that's the Screencast-O-Matic, and you can drag here, and then you just start recording. I would like to demonstrate. Oh, hold on. 
I would like to demonstrate Screencast-O-Matic. And then you can just play it. I would like to demonstrate Screencast-O-Matic. Yep. So as long as you have that dotted line around the screen, you know that Screencast-O-Matic is open. Yes, ma'am? I have these two. Mm -hmm. They do. That's correct. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Um, Screencast-O-Matic is more of a video software, where Jing is more of a graphic, you know, type, grab that graphic type software. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it records everything you do. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you you can record what you're doing with Jing too. Yes, Jing is also a recorder, but you only have five minutes worth of video with the free version. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, I've used it on the iPad through Safari. Yeah. Yes, not an app. Love that. Yes. Yes. Did you guys hear that? She's using, okay, she's using Screencast-O-Matic in her online courses, and it will also put a little video of her talking down on the side of the screen so they can actually see her also with the, what she's doing on her screen. So two different options. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're all free. Yep, all free. Yes, ma'am. Yes, or you can share the link. Share the link. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can take it into Camtasia and add caption. Thank you for that. Um, we have some Camtasia licenses at our school, but it's not widespread because it's you know somewhat expensive. So, yes, ma'am. You can. Yes. Yes. From the web version. Yes. Yes. That's what I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Yeah. Is there any close, have you found any closed captioning features with Screencast-O-Matic? They haven't added anything at this time. So I just use a text box. Yes, sir. Yes. That's yes. There is. Yes, there is. Yeah, just go to jing.com on that. Did you get one of the handouts? Yeah. And I may have actually gave you the getting started link. On some of those I always get, I try to give the getting started link so it has all those PDFs and the videos and things like that. And you can always go to YouTube, you know, and, and type it in too. It'll you'll find it. Yes. Sir. Yes. Um, with the screencast and Matic, I've had some experience with that. Not with Jing. I have not had any experience. I haven't used Jing for that. But with Jing, you can go ahead and use the telestrator and draw and point to the screen, circle items. Yeah, our math instructors have used that through the smart board, and so I'm not really. I haven't seen that demonstrated. So I'm going to say yes, but I don't. I don't exactly know if you can do that from your actual desktop. So. <clears throat> Show me. Okay. Show me. This is wonderful. I love this. Okay. Yes. Great. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. They um, told me I had to use the presentation. <laughs> 
Um, so I didn't want to, um, you know, use the Prezi and get in any trouble for that. But they, they sent the template from, you know, from Course Technology and said, use this template for your presentation. So I said, okay, you know, you want me to come present? I will use what you want me to use. Um, but now if I had been really smart, I could have imported my presentation into Prezi. But at the same time, I, I didn't know if there was any... You know, problem with that, and I know they've, they've uploaded it to that website, so I know that that probably would need to be a PowerPoint. So, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, let me get your email address at the end. Um, and we have about five more minutes, so um, anything else that you guys want to, to look at? Any more questions? Yes, oh, I thought, oh, okay, okay, great, okay. Let's look at really quick um, how to um, how to import Prezi's PowerPoints into Prezi. Let's try this again. Yes. You know, I don't have it like a gazillion email addresses. So, okay. Here we go. Okay. If I wanted to do a Prezi and import my PowerPoint, I wanted to click on New Prezi. And then I usually um, either I will find a picture that is relating to the topic that I'm presenting. Or I will use one of the templates. Sometimes it's just easier to use a template. I'm trying to see. Let's use um, this process one so you can kind of see how that works. So I'm going to choose the process template. And you can insert here. You click on the insert tab. You can click PowerPoint. <clears throat> and I have my course technology conference PowerPoint on my desktop. So I'm going to open it, and you'll notice you'll get this little pop-up on the side over here that shows that it's importing my PowerPoint. This really is the fastest way to me to do a Prezi, because you can, I mean, I really could spend hours, probably all day doing a Prezi, just dragging and moving and things like that. And so I usually just import the PowerPoint and then let it do its thing. You'll notice you'll get all the slides from the PowerPoint. You do not get any images or any um, animated clip art as you transfer over. So that's really a downside. Okay, and I'm going to say I want to insert all of these. I've had it do it perfectly, and then the next time, it won't. So I'm going to say sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. So you kind of have to test those links before you run out, you know, with your power, with your Prezi thinking that it's going to work perfectly. Um, I think it depends on, you know, the video, really, which sounds crazy, but that's really, I've had some experience with, both, with it being both ways. So, <clears throat> okay. The screen's a little hard to see. So if I'm going to go home, I'm going to start the presentation. Oop, that's not where I want to go. Let's go back over here to where we are. And you can drag this around. Play around with it if you want to. So if you start here... You can edit your path. You 
can just go from, there's where my first slide is, and this was um, the, the path that I clicked on that was the default. You can kind of see there. And notice my um, font does not show up well here at all. So that may, you may have to take some playing around with the font color and size and things like that. So the font I was using on my PowerPoint doesn't show it really well against this white background. So you can either add a background or you can change the font color and size. Okay. Questions about Prezi? <clears throat> Let's go over here and see if it's going to do it. Jump in with that first template that I did. And you can drag your PowerPoints over to that also if you want to do that. Questions? Okay. Okay, and this is, um, I didn't close out the screencast o -matic. You can see here that you can publish to YouTube, um, publish to a video file, or publish to the Screencast-O-Matic website. Um, I usually publish to YouTube, so whoever asked that question earlier and I said share the link, I don't think I said it was the YouTube link. So I publish to YouTube and then um, I usually try to create a channel or so for my classes. That way, you know, nothing crazy gets in that YouTube channel. Okay. Questions? Okay, well, that's all I have. Um, so if you have any questions about, um, you know, you want, to send, you want me to send you anything or send you the handout, feel free to come up and I'll take your email address.